There are very few remakes in COD Zombies that are so fine-tuned and overall so well done that they deserve a retrospective. The Giant is one of them. The Giant is to Shadows of Evil as Town was to Transit and Five was to Kino, the weird casual second on disc map. Locked behind a paywall as DLC, however, The Giant was played less than Shadows, but given its significance in the storyline along with being the only casual in the main lineup, The Giant was incredible important. Because Shadows was so complex, it was up to the giant to do all of the heavy lifting for the casual community. And while it didn't add a lot of new content, it brought with it tons of new lore and managed to reimagine the iconic Darice in a totally new and fresh way. And really, I think the giant is a shining example of just how you should remake a map. And so welcome back to Zombies Retrospective, and buckle up as we tackle the smallest map in the Black Ops 3 Zombies roster. So lastly, before we get into it, I just wanted to mention that my analytics show that only 46% of you guys are actually subscribed. And so it would be amazing if you guys could hit that button and help support the channel as well as this series. Also, don't forget to leave a like, and with all that said, let's get into it. So I think it's important first to acknowledge the subtle difference between a remaster and a remake. It's generally agreed upon that the defining difference between these two very similar pieces of work come down to creative liberty. A remaster is generally quite void of creativity as it forces itself to stay completely true to the original creation. Instead, remasters add value with things like updated graphics, bug fixes, the removal of glitches, and a smoother engine. And a lot of the time these remasters are quite boring because they fail to provide a whole lot of new value. And especially in the realm of Activision, where we've been given things like Modern Warfare 2 Remastered, they are generally underwhelming. Zombies isn't so notorious for having bad remasters, however. The series had actually seen a few remade maps before we got to the giant. Resurrection DLC for Black Ops 1 saw a remastered set of World of War maps. These were true and much needed remasters. We got to enjoy the old favorites on the updated Black Ops 1 engine, free of horrible glitches of World of War. Quick Revive worked in solo, the Wonderwaff didn't glitch your jug, and there were no black hole gravity zombies. But really, that and an updated weapon roster was all the Black Ops 1 remaster brought. They were necessary, but they didn't provide the same value that something like the Giant brought in. It's great that they exist for this video, however, as not only do we have OG Duris to compare the Giant to, but this also shows us what a Duris remaster for Black Ops 3 could have been. Playable and fun, but generally pretty boring, uninspired, and something that's easily forgotten about. But again, the Giant is not this, and it's safe to call it a true make. And so a remake is the other side of the same coin. A remake often has all the things we just talked about, but it takes more creative liberties to improve the map. A remake takes the same original recipe, but it looks at it and asks, what can we do to make this better? How can we make this old idea feel new, fresh, and interesting? And I think players were lucky enough to see that The Giant completely delivered as a remake. The Giant, as the third iteration of Darius, not only worked, but succeeded beyond anyone's wildest expectations. So what is it that makes The Giant so good? Well, the cornerstone feature of the giant is its lore and storyline. What made it feel so new was the fact that it was a return to somewheres that we had already been, but with a fresh set of eyes. That is to say, it's not simply the same story taking place here. We know how Doris goes. Richtofen teleports to the moon, Samantha's dog Fluffy gets turned into a hellhound, and Maxis gets sent to the ranch. See, the giant happens to take place at the same factory that we've been to, but it's a different time and setting with different characters. Well, sort of. It starts with that exact same storyline. It's familiar with Ultimus Richtofen sending away Maxis and Samantha. But then our new heroes who were revealed in Origins show up. Dempsey, Nikolai, and Takeo travel here and confront this alternate timeline version of Richtofen. As an audience member, knowing what is played out here, it is so cool to see our three heroes confront him about his actions. They reference BO1's chain of events which must not be set in motion. And as Richtofen asks, Do you know 
who I am? So cocky, so confident and maniacal, they almost mock him, which in a way is a mock to the very old formula of zombies. It's literally saying, yeah, 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 we know that formula, but we're the new cool guys here and we're here to shake it up. And this is set 100% crystal clear as Primus Richthofen steps out of that teleporter, looks his ultimate self in the eyes with disgust and kills him. And I really think it's in this cutscene where Jason Blundell and the writing team completely and utterly dispel the old baggage of Black Ops 1 zombies. They take that simple, confused, and shaky storyline and they just put it out of its misery. Primus Richthofen shooting his former self is the literal symbol of Treyarch retconning that old storyline. They're literally killing it. It's shocking, it's exciting, and it does so much for the storyline. After this, we see Richthofen do something to the body, which is really foreshadowing the blood vials as well as the entire quest that these four are about to undergo. It's a beautiful cutscene that grounds and finally reinvents the entire series. And I gotta say, Richthofen shooting his alter ego is one of the most memorable moments in the entire zombie storyline. And so the giant communicates to you instantly that this is a map for the lore. It's one of the most storyline based maps in zombies history. It's storyline first and foremost in a place that just happens to be Darice. And the lore continues with the start of the map. As soon as you spawn in, the dialogue is some of the best that any map ever has. Richthofen is manic from his actions, and as each round he works to calm himself down and remind himself of his greater plan. The dialogue between the characters is amazing as well, and I think the map really starts working to build relationships between the four here. This marks the beginning of them actually becoming close. And we also get tons more of foreshadowing of what is to come. The talk of a special device, which is the summoning key and Richthofen's plan to set things right. It all starts here in this new iteration of Dream. The giant also does an amazing job of reinventing its atmosphere. Darice feels gloomy and dark, where the giant feels mysteriously inspiring. It's covered in snow, and overall, the giant is just beautiful to look at. The soundtrack is also fantastic. You've got the map opener, which is subtle and mysterious, but almost provocative. It really incites the imagination, managing to sound like the beginning of something new, and that's exactly exactly what the giant is. It even takes the round change melody from Mob of the Dead, which is so good I have no problem hearing again. You've also got Pack-a-Punch music, which gives the feeling of a grand epic adventure of something unfolding. There's a very interesting remix for Beauty of Annihilation that manages to work really well with the map. And lastly, there's the game over music. It's nothing groundbreaking, but is a very consistent sound that we will hear throughout Black Ops 3. And so overall, I think the soundtrack is very impactful in contributing to the overall atmosphere. And I just need to say it again, it is a beautiful map. The graphics are so different to the original Darice that it doesn't even feel fair to compare them. Of course, the giant is technically better, but what I love about the giant is that the graphics are different. It almost feels like it has 1% comic book in it, and I don't even know if that makes sense, but that's the way I always viewed it. Artistically, it's a very different take from the original Doris, but it works great, and yeah, the giant just looks beautiful. Now, if we move towards the realm of content, the giant didn't really feel like it set out to add a lot, but there still is enough new content that changes the overall dynamic of gameplay. The most important change made here is the addition of Double Pack-a-Punch. Double Pap adds a new dynamic to high rounds, and I think this really allows us to appreciate the map in a new light. Doris was frankly challenging for high rounds, mainly due to bugs and oddities with the engine. While Black Ops 1 fixed this, it was still a challenging high round for most players, but the Giants iteration of Doris really changes the formula. You're not relying on the Wonder Waff, despite it still being the most effective weapon on the map, and I like that. It's worth your while to gamble for it on the box, but you'll be perfectly fine to simply use any double pack a punched weapon. 
weapon. It just feels like a nice casual map that you can train on, and I like that. It's like the first time that I've truly been able to experience the giant in that way. But of course, if you want to, you can still play Jerice in the old classic way on the catwalk. Also, on the note of the Wonderwaff, I think it's worth noting how different that weapon feels. The animation and effects of the Wonderwaff were updated, and it really does feel fresh despite being an old design. The way that the Wonderwaff was updated is almost a bigger representation of how the entire map is updated. Fresh and new, but still true to the roots of the original map. And the addition of Gobblegum also adds a new dynamic. Where most BO3 maps can be broken with Megas, the Giant is so simple that the use of OP gums does little more than take away from the enjoyment and purpose of the map. That is to say, because the main objective is setting up, when you use Megas, you cheat yourself out of the map's experience. And so not only does this mean that players aren't encouraged to use Megas on this map, but they're actually discouraged. Classic gobble gums are all you need, and this leaves players with a great space to play Black Ops 3 in its most raw and true form. There's no electric cherry, widow's wine, or shield, or really any buildables for that matter. Gobble gums are the only bonus edge that you've got, and so I really think that this map sees gobble gums done the best. This is also one of the only maps where Treyard offered players the chance to get free perks. By teleporting, the free drop spawner will occasionally give a perk bottle which can fill your slot with an additional perk. Furthermore, the map has a small easter egg that can actually allow you to reveal another perk machine. By throwing down monkey bombs in the teleporters, you get an Origins robot head laser to reveal a perk machine hidden in the snow. It's really cool. However, I think that it was a bad addition as they made the perks random. Leaving it to chance is very frustrating as the two perks are quite polar. Deadshot and Stamina Up are both very helpful, but only for specific strategies. If you want to train, you need Stamina Up. If you want to camp, you need Deadshot, and having to reset for it is annoying. I think it would have made a lot more sense to either have it reveal two perks, or maybe just make it a Wonder Fizz machine that only has Stamina Up and Deadshot in it. It's a nice Easter egg but relying on it to get a perk is a little bit frustrating. The map also does have a tiny true easter egg, which is basically just a remake of Jerice's original flytrap. While a nice callback to Zombie's first easter egg, I'm sad to say that overall this is actually pretty bad. The lore that we received from this at the time was very exciting. Maxis is able to pinpoint which dimension we're in and there's so much going on about what he wants to do and where he's at and he's a different timeline version and oh, it literally leads to nothing. It was a cool idea that had zero payoff in the end. But second and worst is the actual in-game reward. Beating this easter egg provides you with the Annihilator Specialist weapon. While theoretically infinite in ammo, this is a horrible weapon that serves no purpose whatsoever. Okay, so think about this. The Annihilator has the strength of a pretty average regular gun, right? It's not pack-a-punch, maybe it's a little bit on the higher end, but it's certainly nothing special. Yet, in order to get it, to activate the flytrap, you need a pack-a-punched weapon. So your reward is something weaker than what it takes to unlock. Um, what? This is one of the single biggest oversights in the entirety of Black Ops 3. And this only looks worse when we consider what the other specialist Black Ops 3 weapons are. The Apothecan Sword, Ragnaroks, the Skull of Non Sapwe, and a Baby Dragon Zoom Fist Gauntlet. Now, I got invited to Treyarch to play Dr. Eisendrak early because of a donation that me and some other people in the Zombies community did. And I actually had the opportunity to speak with one of the developers on this exact thing. He said they basically just had to take one of the MP specialist weapons and that this one felt like the best choice. And so while I can certainly respect and understand the development constraints, I don't think that this was a very well thought out idea. I think it would have made a lot more sense to bring in the Purifier Specialist weapon, which was a flamethrower. First of all, Darius in World at War is known for being the only Zombies game with a flamethrower. And secondly, it would make thematic sense as you retrieve the weapon from a flaming 
furnace. So I can totally respect the fact that they couldn't make something new, but I find it very disappointing that we didn't get a flamethrower. It would have been some really subtle and respectable fan service, but also would have hopefully provided something of actual use. This is really the only place that the giant is lacking in content, but I feel like it's extremely important to mention. Because when you make a map this small, each piece of content becomes monumentally more significant. And so the Annihilator leaves a giant void in the map, leaving much to be desired. Still though, overall, the giant is a sound map. The developers knew that they couldn't simply make a Darius clone, and so instead of making the map bigger, they made it deeper. They didn't expand upon the actual location like we would see in Black Ops 4 Zombies with Tag or Alpha Omega. Instead, they chose to keep it exactly as it was, and this makes it feel like a remaster. Yet with new storyline, characters, and an atmosphere so different they even changed the weather, they managed to create something truly inspired. And I think in a lot of ways, the giant saved the release of Black Ops 3 Zombies. Shadows was so big and complicated, and a lot of people hated it on launch. This then had the unintended effect of putting an ungodly amount of pressure onto the secondary map. And seeing how successful Black Ops 3 Zombies was, I think that shows what a good job the Giant did. The Giant took its burden willingly and did its best to carry the weight where Shadows could not. And so while some people might be tempted to call the Giant a remaster, I think it's much deeper than that. The Giant deserves its title of true remake, and really is one of the best examples of how this creation form should be done. It's memorable and nostalgic, but completely fresh, and I believe it's one of the best piece of reproduced content Treyarch has ever made for zombies. Now, it's important to remember that this still is a remake, so it's not going to end up in the top upper echelon of S tier, but it is still a great map. It was an iconic map that again set the stage for Black Ops 3 Zombies, and I really think the game would not have been the same without it. And so with that said, my final rating for the Giants is an 8.3 out of 10. But as a remake, I would actually like to give it another rating. I think it's kind of interesting to make a tier list entirely for remakes and remasters and to consider the fact of what they are. And so in the context of being a remake and remaster in this new tier list, I would actually give it a 9.4 out of 10. The Giant is truly an S tier remake. Oh, and for all of you asking on size, the Giant weighs in at 1 Darice. Anyway, with all that said, thank you guys so much for watching. Um, if you are new to the channel, please consider subscribing. Make sure to leave a like and uh, go check out the second channel. We've been posting a ton of awesome content over there, so your subscriptions would really be appreciated. Anyway, with that said, thank you guys so much. I'll talk to you later. And as always, peace out, you freaking nerds.